influencers, which has led to many brands to turn to micro influencers. So micro influencers have like uh, 10, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 uh, followers, uh, people that get to resonate to their content. But also in 2020, there's a new option of influencers. I've already told you there's a lot of scrutiny when it comes to micro influencers, mega influencers. Mega influencers have uh, an average of 500 followers, uh, 100, 100, 100,000 followers, uh, 500 and, and, and the likes, a million followers. The new breed now is nano-influencers. The exact numbers of influencers needed to be uh, considered a nano-influencer is possibly from 1,000 to around 5,000 followers. There are often people who have a lot of influence with a very small niche of a community, uh, like, like the likes of people who have YouTube channels that are big, but they have very few subscribers, uh, possibly a hun uh, 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 possibly 1,000 subscribers, 2,000 subscribers. Uh, for the people on Twitter that have maybe 1,000 uh, followers, but they command and their engagement rate is really high. So the engagement rate is when someone that has maybe possibly 2,000 followers uh, puts up a piece of content. Um, again, they fall, they fall in this category of nano-influencer. They put up a piece of content. When they put up this piece of content, the engagement rate is usually high. So engagement rate can be retweets, people that comment around this content, people that engage and send inbox messages, DMs, that is what we call engagement rent. So this breed of influencers is growing really high and very many brands now want to work with nano influencers. Let's look at developing a digital marketing strategy. As we go along, we shall keep breaking a couple of things in terms of how you develop a digital marketing strategy. And this whole entire track, which is the first track to digital marketing strategy, is just about how do you develop a plan, a strategy, to actually deploy your digital marketing as a business and as a brand. Let's begin with a strategy. Always and always begin with a strategy. Digital marketers often choose tactics before the strategy, which is really wrong. You need to, you need to start you need to start with a structured plan, which is your strategy. You can replace the word strategy with plan, a structured plan on how you are going to lay out these tactics and how you're going to deploy. Okay. All men can see these tactics whereby I conquer, but what none can see is the strategy out of which victory is evolved. This is Sun Tzu, the art of war. He's saying, all of you can see my tactics, but no one really gets to see the strategy. That's what I'm trying to mean. You need a plan. If you're saying you're going digital, if you're a digital, marketing, a digital marketer and you're helping a small business, you're helping your brand go digital or trying to help with their digital marketing efforts, you need to have a living, breathing document written out on how digital is going to be done, possibly for a certain period of time. Uh, what is digital marketing? A series of actions that help you achieve your company goals through carefully selected online marketing tactics. So these are actions, plans, tactics that help you achieve a goal for the company. These can be through channels like paid channels, uh, and channels and owned uh, media channels. Again, in one of the episodes, I'm going to be able to break up some of these. Um, so that is a digital marketing strategy. What are the elements? The elements are what we're going to break up as we go along. One of the elements is you need to look at the existing digital marketing channels. If the brand or business already has this, literally you need to know the situation of the business. These are the elements. Identify the goals, uh, and the marketing tools you need to deploy, you need to know. Build buyer personas, you need to build who you're going to speak to, the customer, who is that customer? Those are the buyer personas. Choose digital platforms. You need to choose what platforms you want to work with. Content strategy. Again, there's a full episode just on content strategy, how you're going to do your content strategy. Uh, check for competitor analysis. You need to know who are your competitors, what's happening. You need to set strategies. Sorry, you need to set targets. What are the targets you want to use? You need to measure results and KPIs. How will you measure? I'll show you a couple of KPIs and metrics you need to look out for. Then you need to set out a budget. 
then you, you need to put everything together. So let's dive into uh, the situation analysis. What do you need to do before uh, you get to build your digital strategy or as you build your digital marketing strategy? Some of the things you need to keep in mind while you're planning to build your digital marketing strategy is always start with the customer. Build your plan around customer insights and needs, not around your products and tactics. Always think about the customer, where are they? That's why along the way we're going to look at a uh, uh, customer, customer personas, buyer personas, targeted audiences. Those are things you need to start from that level. Who is your customer? What are their needs? What are their challenges? What are their pain points? Always keep the documents, uh, keep it flexible. Situations and plans change all the time, especially online. So ensure plans are usable, ensure there's a clear vision for the year and keeping detail to a shorter period, maybe possibly three months, 90 days, uh, possibly maybe the first two quarters of the year as you build this strategy. Remember, this strategy is a written document that you'll get to see, share with the wider team, and then you get to execute it. Set realistic targets. Again, as you're planning to build, as we build this digital marketing strategy, set realistic goals. The goals should be smart. And we shall move into how smart the goals are as we build into uh, developing your objectives and goals. So include uh, smart objectives in your plans, but keep them realistic by basing them on insights from your analytics, if they're already analytics, or if you have some sense of insights around your customer. So they are easy for others to buy into. If you have like the head of marketing, the CEO, the general manager, managing director, it's easier for them to buy into goals or objectives that are realistic. And remember, if they're aligned to the wider business goal, keep it simple. Again, you're building this for your business. You're building it for the execution or possibly a digital marketing and you're building it for a certain business. And if you're going to share this digital marketing strategy with the head of marketing or with the business owner, keep it jargon light. Don't put in any hard words that will confuse the business owner, that will confuse uh, the marketing lead, that will confuse, confuse the, the, the digital, um, digital lead, that will confuse the managing director that will confuse the section manager. So it helps others buy into what you're trying to say with your strategy. Keep plans up to date. Eventually you're going to have to review and update regularly. So keep the document flexible and keep it open to further updates. Situational analysis. This is where you need to start when you're building a digital marketing strategy slash you're building a plan for the business. Always start with the customer. You need to know their characteristics, you need to know their behaviors, you need to know their needs, you need to know their wants. That's why one of the sections we have as we build the digital marketing strategy is the customer persona. As you look through in one of our resources, in the resource toolkit, you'll be able to find a tool that we have given you on how to create a customer persona slash buyer persona. Situation analysis. The first thing you need to do when developing your digital marketing strategy or your digital marketing plan is to carry out, to carry, to carry out an internal and external analysis, SWOT analysis. A useful framework for this is your SWOT analysis that allows you to look at the strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and also the weaknesses for your companies at the at the market at large. You need to look at all those layers. You need to know the situation of the business. You need to be familiar with the ecosystem you operate in. What your customers need, where are they, what can you address with their customer needs. If these customers have needs, how can you address their needs? Where are they, what are they doing, what are their challenges? This analysis is equally quantitative as it is quantitative through looking at the factors such as especially not such as especially digital habits intermediary intermediaries as uh, influencers and many others where are they what are their digital footprints so uh, i'm breaking this up into two there's market level and company level in terms of SWOT the strength weaknesses threats and opportunities. When you look at the company, a company level 
in terms of weaknesses and strengths, what are we doing wrong as a company? What do we uh, what do external agents perceive to be the company's primary weakness? What are the weaknesses of the business? The weaknesses. What factors negatively influence the business or the sales or the development of any product or campaign? What are those weaknesses to the company, to the business? Again, the strength of the company. Again, we're looking at the company level. What are the main advantages of the company? Where do we win? What does my company do well? What does your company do well? What do we do well? How can we leverage that strength? What resources do we need to beat our competitors and become better? What do we consider to be our main strength? You need to know some of that. You need to know your main strength as a business, as a brand. What elements influence the development of a cell? What are those elements that influence someone to actually come and buy from you, buy that product, buy that service? Okay, now let's look at the market level. The market level in terms of threats and opportunities. Let's look at threats. What obstacles do you face? What, what do my competitors do? What do your competitors do? Is the company experiencing any, are you experiencing any financial issues? Can any threats stop the company's operations? These are some of the key questions you need to look in terms of your threat, especially from the level of the market. Again, from the level of the market, let's look at the opportunities. What good opportunities that the company have? What opportunities do you have as a business, as a brand? What market trends do we have information about? As a business, whatever industry you're in, what market trends are you seeing and what information do you need? What technolo technological changes are you seeing? Are there any tech changes you're seeing in terms of the equipment, in terms of how you do business? Again, from the market level. So these are some of the key things you need to look out as a business in terms of your SWOT analysis. All these capture the business, the business objective, bringing us into the marketing uh, plan, heading into the digital marketing strategy. I don't know if you've gotten what I mean, but there's a big difference between the marketing plan, there's a big difference between the marketing plan and the digital marketing strategy. So the digital marketing strategy sits in the document of the marketing strategy. So there's a wider marketing strategy that, that, that looks at uh, both online and offline. That's the marketing strategy. Anything offline, online, how we sell our products, uh, what's the business objective, that's the marketing strategy. So inside that document, you'll have another document, which we're right now trying to attempt to create, which is the digital marketing strategy. How will we promote our products and services online? The digital marketing strategy. Again, as you go into the situational analysis, you look at things like uh, your current situation as a business, business objectives, which I've talked about, outlining the business strategy that you have agreed for your business. What is the business strategy? What are the business objectives? All these tie into the digital marketing strategy. Everything in the digital marketing strategy has to come from the wider business objective. Uh, your marketing plan should look at things like your current marketing situation. How do you market your products? How do you, marketing, how do you market your services? This is offline and online. How do you do that? Again, this will guide you in terms of planning for your digital marketing strategy. Defining your marketing objectives, outlining your marketing strategy. Again, when you're doing your situation analysis, you need, this is very keen and I've emphasized it, your customers. Always start with the customer, their characteristics, their behaviors, their needs and their wants. You need to define these clearly. These will guide you even as we go into writing content and creating as we go into the content strategy and content marketing. Options for segmenting, you need to know how you're going to segment, if you have different segments of your, uh, of your customers, who are your ideal customers, what are their characteristics, who are they, you can create, which we're going to do with our customer persona, you can create an ideal customer and say that ideal customer is called Mary, Mary, Mary lives in Kisasi, Mary loves to do this, Mary has this type of phone, this is their job title for Mary, as you jump into as you jump into uh, your customer, customer personas. You also need to conduct an internal study to know where your company is. This I've already emphasized. Um, uh, so here you need to conduct that to know where they are in terms of uh, the digital age. Do they have a website? Is the website uh, user-friendly? 
uh, how is the usability of the website? Are people browsing on the website? Do we have a, an updated blog? Does the company have a blog? Do they update the blog periodically? Um, what is our current uh, positioning of the website? When someone searches around your business on uh, search engine optimization, S-E-O, search engine optimization, meaning when someone searches your website organically without paying any money to Google, which is search engine marketing, and they're able to see your website organically, search engine optimization, what position is your website? So is it number one, number two, number three? Is your website uh, mobile friendly? Can it sit on different uh, mobile devices? Is the content uh, user friendly? Uh, is, is it security uh, stable in terms of um, the security of the site? Uh, which content is there? Is the content very clear on what the business does? These are very key in terms of search engine optimization. And I would love for you to go and dive in more into search engine optimization and search engine marketing. But later on, we shall also break down a few things when it comes to search engine uh, marketing in one of the episodes for the Fast Track Digital Marketing Strategy. If you have any questions, uh, please, uh, in our comment sections, uh, please uh, write your questions. We shall be able to get back to you and answer you. Remember to follow us on TIV Upskill. Remember, us, remember to uh, like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, subscribe on our YouTube channel. Uh, watch out for the next episode. Thank you so much.